all the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me, what am I to ask or said? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith it hinted well. For I know what every fall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know what every fall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Jersey he fly, he path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary sin may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, Gushing from the rock before me, lowest spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lowest spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, all the fullness of His love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit floated mortal, when his life to run the day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that God, you have led us all the way. And God, one day you're going to lead us through the skies to that heavenly home. And God, it's going to be a great day. I wish it was today. Lord, thank you that you brought uh, our brother back from Kentucky and Lord, safe and sound. And uh, Lord, I pray you just help us all to uh, look to you tonight, uh, fill our hearts with you, uh, your love and your word. And, and God, uh, help us to go out and tell others the good news about Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, thy tent shall be our home. Through days of preparation, my grace has made us strong. And now, O oh King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O oh King Eternal, till sin fears war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper. The sweet payment of peace, for not with sword like flashing, nor roll of stirring drums, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom come. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with peace. For gladness brings like morning, wherever thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O God of I am so glad that our Father in Heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Yeah. I am so glad that our Father in Heaven tells 
Father, love is a book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, I forget him and wander away. Still he does love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving heart would I flee. When I remember that Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great King, wish that my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Anybody else? Oh, Brother Jeff. All righty. Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> Amen. Uh, turn to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Now, um, a lot of times I would get up on a Wednesday night before Easter and I would preach about uh, Calvary and the cross and because uh, that's uh, truly the biblical day that Christ was crucified. Uh, but um, I'm going to preach... Uh, kind of on a, uh, a outcome of the cross. And this is one of the main reasons Christ came to die on the cross for us. And it's found in Psalm uh, 106, or at least uh, the idea of it is. Uh, before we begin, I got uh, my magazine uh, today and my mail at the house. This is Newsmax magazine. Uh, some of you may uh, watch Newsmax uh, channel on, on uh, your cable or your satellite dish. Um, uh, they cut it off for a while because uh, uh, they claimed it was a, a fanatical conservative thing they didn't want on the air. They had so much pressure. Uh, now there's another cable out fight called Frontier out west that's cut them off. Uh, so you can pray about that. Um, you know, they claim they want uh, both sides of the story and a balanced news. You know, uh, they don't. Uh, they just want people to get there. But um, I don't agree with everything that comes from these people. But I wanted to show you this. And I'm going to come kind of down. Linda's already seen this. Uh, this is a computer-generated face from the Shroud of Turin, and it claims to be the real face of Jesus. Now, I'll tell you what's wrong with this picture. You want to know what's wrong with it? I know what's wrong with it. What's wrong with it? It ain't him. It ain't him. Well, for, first of all, he's got blue eyes. Don't know very many Judean Jews that had blue eyes. <laughs> well, at least they didn't put blonde hair on him. Well, I've heard it before that Jesus is blue eyes. Well, I, I don't know. There's no biblical evidence for that. Matter of fact, Psalm of Solomon uh, had, tends uh, to indicate that he's brown-eyed, actually. Uh, but anyway, the Shroud of Turin, we don't know where it came from. We don't know who was buried in it. Uh, we don't know how that face got on there. Uh, and the other thing is, is, that's not a real Jewish nose. That's more like an uh, Englishman's nose or a Frenchman's nose. Sorry, I, I, I'm not buying it. It's not just the face, it's a full body. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, true. I could have done better than that. Anyway, I thought I'd show you this, and uh, to let you know the uh, the devil is still alive and well. Man. He's trying to fool people. Don't don't be fooled by this kind of stuff. If God wanted us to have a picture of Jesus, he would have 
camera's one. Amen. And we got a camera. With yeah, you got to invent the camera back in uh, BC something. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you can come up and look at this, but I, I haven't read it yet, so don't cart car it off to the house. Okay? <laughs> I would like to read it. Uh, Psalm 106, verse 23. The Bible says here very plainly, Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. This is God. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Heavenly Father, help us now as we study God uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ and standing in the breach, God, and how he stands in the breach for us. And help us be the kind of Christian that stands in the breach for other people. Help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look, uh, we live in a time, uh, it's a time to stand up. Amen. It's a time to stand in. And it's a time to stand out. Amen. Uh, the world's very good at those three things. Christians, uh, from what I've seen, are apparently bad at them. Or at least they're not doing them. This whole psalm is about uh Israel's sin and God's mercy on Israel despite their sin. Well, I don't know about you or me, uh, but we're all sinners and we need God's mercy. Amen? Amen? And we need somebody like Moses to stand in the breach for us. Now, a breach is nothing but a gap. Amen? It's just a gap. Um, uh, let's say you had a Let's say you had a ship. Uh, let's, let's say you had the Titanic, okay? And, 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 you know, the Titanic was a great big old ship and, you know, it had uh, all kinds of little portholes and had a bridge thing even. It had, thing, it had some smokestacks come off of this thing, about four of them, I think, and they had little stripes on them. And what happened is one day they hit this iceberg under the water. And guess what? It made a breach in there. Down it went. Then you got people, you know, they would build these old castle walls, you know, like this. And back in the medieval days, and, and armies would come along and they would, they would have these great big machines that uh, would uh, sling great big stones, you know, uh, over. Sometimes they tried to put them over. Uh, if they had something that was flaming, they, they tried to throw it over the wall and it would catch the inside of fire. A lot of times they just they just bashed against the wall till till I had a, a a breach in the wall. And then they stick these big logs in and make it bigger than the crawl through and attack the place. So uh, uh, a breach is kind of a gap. And uh, if you get a breach like that, especially in a ship, you better you better put something in it real quick. And uh, of course, a, a castle like that, uh, they would have uh, same people that would go and uh, stuff logs and all kinds of things and those things. Uh, but it's a, a break, and it leaves you vulnerable for attack. Uh, in Ezekiel twenty-two, verse thirty. Um, God said this to Ezekiel. He said, I sought for a man among them that they should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. You know, if God truly was looking for a man, he looked and looked and looked and looked for 4,000 years of the Old Testament. And then he didn't find one. Uh, I mean, Moses stood in temporary, and there was prophets and people like Elijah and all kinds of folks that came along, that uh, Samuel and David, that stood in the gap temporarily, but God was looking for someone to stand in the gap for all sinners. So that's why he sent his only begotten son. And he was going to die on the cross, pay for our sins, and if we received him as our Savior... He would fill that breach. Now God is looking for men and women, boys and girls, to fill the breach for lost sinners outside this door. We need to go and tell them the story. Uh, they've, they've got breaches in their lives. Uh, sin does terrible things to people. 
uh, it, it causes uh, families to break up and fortunes to get lost and, and the health to fail and they need a savior and that's what Easter time and uh, the cross is all about saving sinners God's son only begotten son paying that price when do we need someone to stand in the breach well we need it in a time of destruction a time of destruction. And this is an apt picture of the last days in which we live. You know, we live in a, a, a day of temptation and sin. It's bad enough that we broadcast sinful things uh, over the radio. And we print sinful things with printing presses. Uh, but uh, we put them out on the television. And now we put them out on the internet. And uh, things like YouTube. You have to be careful what you click on. Because you never know what you're going to see sometimes. And with the, especially with things like YouTube. It's so much easier to get so many things. That you're not expecting. Uh, back in the days of just, you know, four or five tele or three television stations is all we had growing up. And then, then uh, they came out with UHF, and then we had some more, and then they came out with cable and all that stuff, and all of a sudden we got hundreds of channels, seems like. We can see all kinds of things. And temptation goes abroad. First Timothy 6, 9 says, But they that will be rich... Uh, fall into temptation and a snare and it, uh, into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Look, Americans compared with the rest of the world are rich people. Even if you're the poorest here among the congregation, you're still richer than the average uh, beggar in uh, China or India. Uh, or some of these countries where, uh, you know, they don't put a high premium on people's lives. You know what they're doing in China, don't you? They're actually killing people and harvesting their organs to, to make money for the state of China. Uh, that's a big deal now. And people that have come over from China, uh, now that they're in the United States, uh, they've had several weeks they've been protesting up and down New York streets and in Washington, D.C., trying to get the U.S. to do something. And finally, the United States Congress has passed a law. I don't know what good our law is going to do them, but basically says if they catch the Chinese doing it in an area or in some kind of trade, they're going to stop trading with them or something. Uh, I don't know that that's going to impress China very much. I really don't. But we have lots of temptations and sin in this country and in the world in general. And many are believing in false teachers. You know how a false teacher gets you? He gets you to believe in him. Not so much the false teaching. That comes later. A uh, confidence man. Uh, you put your confidence in him. He's a, he's a slick guy. He, he comes in and he fools you into thinking that he's uh, upright and he's truth-telling. And that's what all these false teachers do. Uh, a lot of times they, they uh, profess to be people that know the scriptures better than anybody else. Well, folks, I don't know the scriptures better than anybody else, but I believe what I read and hear. And I, I try to make sure... You notice... You notice that Brother Jeff's sermons, they're all the time backed up with Scripture. And, and if you get someone who doesn't back up with Scripture, I'd be careful of that person. 2 Peter 2, 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. See, it's a time of destruction. And you know what? We need to be careful because there's a lot of lost people. Some people know they're lost and just don't want to give up their sin. But there's a lot of people who are lost that don't fear God, that don't have any conception of believing what this book says 
And we need to stand in the gap for those people. We need to find some way to educate those people and witness to them and show them the word of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 16 says destruction and misery are in their ways. Verse 17, and the way of peace they have not known. Verse 18, and there is no fear of God before their eyes. October 30th, 1961, a place that was called the Cape of Sukhoi, Nos, in Severmi Island, which at the time was in the Soviet Union. At that particular place in time, the Soviet Union dropped a bomb that they called the Tsar Bomb, or the AN-602. It produced, to date, the world's largest thermonuclear explosion, 50 megatons. It could have been 100, but they decided not to use... Um, uh, uranium-238 in it, and uh, Nikola Khrushchev ordered it dropped on that particular date because that was the first day of the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. And uh, it was so big of an uh, explosion, it was visible all the way in Norway and Greenland to the west, and all the way in Alaska to the east. That's how big it was. The Americans had a little spy plane that they sent. Somehow they got wind that they were going to drop this thing. And they photographed it somewhere in our archives in the United States in Washington, D.C. They have a film of this. Um, let me put it this way. It broke glass out of windows and houses 480 miles away. That was a big bomb. Kaboom. You know, it's God's grace we haven't destroyed ourselves yet. So there's a time of destruction. Somebody needs to stand in the gap. Not only that, there's a time to be chosen. Uh, God is busy choosing people. Uh, you know, our Savior was chosen. Our Savior was chosen. Moses here in the scripture we've just read as our text. He was a chosen man of God. Um... But like I said, God was looking for someone to stand in the breach for all mankind uh, to bring God and man together. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 4 uh, To whom coming as unto a living stone disavowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious. That's a description of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to notice that he was disavowed of men. Men didn't like him. The religious crowd especially couldn't stand him. They were all the time trying to trap him in some kind of uh, misspoken thing or some kind of tricky question that he had. You know, Jesus passed every single test they gave him. Every single time. He was chosen. All we got to do is choose him. I'm glad today I chose him. It changed my life. Uh, we are chosen through God's mercy. You see, we're chosen? Yeah, we're chosen. You and me, Uncle Charlie, you're chosen. Sister Evelyn, you're chosen. Mr. Cindy, you're chosen. Miss Leonard, you're chosen. Little one, Bubba, you're chosen. You're chosen. Everybody is chosen through the mercy of God to be saved. 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10, but you are a chosen generation. Now, people that are saved, they are they're being they're, they're, they have acted upon being chosen of God. So you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that's me, uh, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past you were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You know, dearly beloved, I have obtained mercy. 
I went to the I went to the altar of God one day and cried upon God for his mercy, a sinner lost and undone. And he opened the coffers of heaven uh, of the mercy bank and he gave me unlimited funds from the mercy bank. And now, beloved, I have all kinds of mercy whenever I need mercy of God. Hallelujah. You know what that mercy helps me to do? Well, he's also choosing men and women, boys and girls, to be his soldiers. The old song says, Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? 2 Timothy 2.4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. John 15, 19 says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. Well, if you were, were, not, if you were lost still and, and you were just of the world, the world would just absolutely love you. But if you proclaim Christ and proclaim to be saved by the mercy of God, the world does not like you. But I have chosen you out of this world. Therefore, the world hateth you. The world hates us, folks. That's why we're at war with it. Because we're soldiers of the cross. You know, we have this thing called the draft in this country. The first draft that we had uh, in, in the uh, 1900s was 1917 at the start of the U.S. entry into World War I. Uh, there was something called the Selective Service Act which was made into law. This military draft lasted until uh, 1920. Then again, in 1940, Congress saw the handwriting on the wall and they, uh, they needed a bigger military. So they enacted the Selective Training and Service Act of 1940. Uh, it became law. Uh, this ended in 1947, a couple years after World War II ended. However, in 1948, a new law was passed uh, because they saw that there was going to be other conflicts in the world. And it was a good thing because the Korean War was just around the corner. And they uh, enacted another law. Additional laws were added to this uh, during the time in 1951 at the outbreak of the Korean War. Again in 1967 because of the Vietnam War, uh, the law was uh, strengthened. Uh, however, in 1969, the original law expired. So they saw this coming in 1967 to 1975. A law was passed. And it was the last lottery draft that we had. The last lottery for this law was drawn on March 12, 1975. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter signed a new draft registration law, which is still in force. Men from 18 to 26 must register to the draft board. In 2016 and 2019, some changes were made, but still 18-year-olds on their 18th birthday must register for the draft. So far, there has not been a drafted army since, uh, I guess, the Vietnam days. We're soldiers. Yeah, 1972, that's right. I didn't write that date down. There was a, the, This thing was like a three-page article. I, I, I did pretty good convincing it down, I thought. So there's a time of destruction. There's a time of ch to be chosen. And you know what? Sometimes there's a time to intervene. Intervene! You say, what does intervene mean? It means you get between... Somebody over here and somebody over here that's having a conflict and you get in between them and you try to make peace or keep them apart or something. And I want to say this, sometimes we need to get involved in being interventionists, especially as Christians. Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He, God saw he was looking for a man, folks, to, to go in the breach, to fill the gap, and there was nobody. So he said, look, 
I'm going to be the intercessor. I'm going to be the mediator. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to fix this. He brought salvation with him and his righteousness. And that's what I have that saves me. His righteousness. Our Savior is interceding for us. Even as we speak, Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sins of the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them. To the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Romans 8.34 Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us? 1 Timothy 2.4 Who will have all men to be saved and come to the, unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ, and I am lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Look. Paul's saying, look, the reason Jesus died on that cross, the reason he took our place, the reason he was buried and rose again is so that we could go to heaven and he could intercede to God for us. And he's still doing it. We get down on our knees and probably say some of the awful things God ever heard. But he, he takes it and gets it up there and smooths it over and forms it a little bit and puts a little bit of Holy Ghost sugar on it. I don't know what he does. Do it and he gives it to God. God says, oh, that's good. Okay, I'll answer that prayer. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he does? You know, mediation uh, is a legal term, actually. And... and Many disputes can be settled by mediation. Commercial disputes, legal disputes, diplomatic disputes, workplace disputes, community disputes, and even family matters can make the use of a mediator. Our laws are based on the old Anglo-Saxon ideas and laws and traditions. Other countries have a little bit different ideas, but every culture has some kind of idea of mediation. Consideration. That's an alternative to suing one another or killing one another. Sometimes even courts order people that have come to court to sue each other to go away and try a mediator and not waste the court's time. That happens a lot, actually. But we have a mediator, folks. He died one day on the cross of Calvary. And he rose again and he, he's, he's on high, folks. Making intercession and mediation for us. And today because of that we can stand. Say we can stand. Yes we can stand. We can uh, stand up because of God's grace. 1 Peter 5.12 By Silvanus a faithful brother unto you. As I suppose I have written briefly exhorting and testifying. That this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. So Paul sent old Sylvanus over there and preached them the grace of God. And they stood. We stand by the word of God. First Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2.15 Where Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which have been taught either by word or our epistle. That's the word of God, folks. That's the word of God. And we stand because we can stand together as Christians. Christian harmony is a great thing, folks. And I encourage us through this season and this coming summer to stand together and find someone to stand in the gap for. Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. 
So all I got to say to you in conclusion is stand already. Ephesians 6, 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, period, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm glad that our Savior died on the cross. And He saves us. And He saves us for a purpose. To stand up for Him and His Word and His Gospel and to tell others. Like Christmas time, holiday is a good time. Look, Easter's not about little bunnies and chocolate and candy and all that stuff and jelly beans. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ if it's about anything. So let's go and tell people this holiday season. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can stand in the breach. And thank you that we have the Lord Jesus Christ that stood for us. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.